Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair and this time I will take my old uh, Nikon lens series E and it's the 100mm 2.8 and it has a yeah kind of stiff focus ring so let's see what we can do about it um, because uh, the lens is really a nice shape so uh, but I would like to I mean the focusing ring is a bit stiff so I would like to re lube it I mean clean and re lube the the focusing helicoids um, so let's have a look inside but we need some tools so we need the famous uh, rubber cones um, probably yeah it could be very useful, but I found out uh, a walking stick uh, rubber end, I don't know the name of it, but it's really sticky and you have a good grip on it, like that. And the, the shape is actually, <laughs> um, what do you say, it fits on a convex lens, but the, the shape here is more concave. So... Uh, it's a, it's a nice tool and I don't think it costs really much. That's a diameter, 50 point or 30 millimeter. Now, those are the, the rubber cones is also useful, but let's see. A few, I mean, two uh, JIS and it should be JIS because it's a Japanese lens. And um, we need some a tweezer, probably a um, anklet uh, dented tweezer can be very useful. A, um, a dentist tool or pointy tool uh, to make some scratch inside the lens uh, when we take off the, uh, I mean when we take apart the helicoids, uh, much more bended um, <laughs> uh, Tweezer can also be very useful. And of course we need some lube. This is grease and it's uh, with a molly, it's molly coat. Uh, it's called LM47 from Liquid Molly. And it's with the MOS2 um, and it looks really dark, but it's really good grease in my opinion. Now we will also clean the helicoids with uh, some isopropyl alcohol, um, 99%. And we, I use two different brushes, one for cleaning and one for re-grease the helicoids. Now let's jump into it. We unscrew the nameplate. Um, and uh, in that way you can get into it. This is uh, <laughs> the rubber stick and I mean the walking stick and it's, uh, it's really good. I mean I could also use the other one. Uh, one of the cones here. It's number four as you can see here probably. And it fits over and uh, fits in the center and have a good grip on with rubber gloves and it's also a way of unscrewing it. Just to mention that that is good to have different tools in your workshop or when you work with old lenses. So the nameplate is made of plastic and underneath we are seeing six screws three that hold the front lens group and three others that actually hold the the front ring which we can see here this one and uh, before i take it apart we just need to have some reference points so in the beginning <coughs> um, i set a mark here our reference is uh, actually, it could be the infinity, but it, I will use 
the yellow mark here um, because in this case it's easier when you before you take it apart so just the um, this screw here is closest to the to the uh, index uh, marks here and um, so I set a mark here on the inside of the front ring but also on the um, the front the edge of the front lens group mount and it's just because so I want the um, front lens group to sit in the same position as I took it apart so <clears throat> the six screws here are all the same dimension so I will just use my um, 2.5 millimeter um, maybe it's with a little too big but uh, sometimes it's good to have a bigger screwdriver so I'll just take off the uh, the front ring which you can see they have a um, yeah <laughs> different shape here than the lens uh, mount here so so off with that and uh, then we can take out the front lens group and it's good with a magnetized screwdriver because then it uh, is just much easier to pull out the screws there and so it is then we can take out the the um, front ring put it aside and actually I do it in this way uh, to arrange my uh, screws and sp whatever two uh, parts I just put the screws inside and then I know okay they fit there it's not possible with the lens <laughs> mount here <clears throat> and again um, there's not necessary to set a mark here because uh, my first reference with the front ring and uh, also the uh, marking line here uh, it's closest to the index um, depth of field uh, marks so just take it off and then we are facing more into the aperture system which I will not take apart I have done it in a different way video <coughs> so you can just see it if you have oil on the aperture plates so this is how it looks and um, oh I forgot I haven't taken this lens apart of the aperture I <laughs> that was the 50 millimeter sorry so <coughs> this is the front lens group which I actually have clean clean it already that's the video <laughs> sorry now <coughs> since um, I haven't taken apart the the aperture system um, yeah I should probably make another video about it but um, yeah for now I will just uh, look into the, the helicoid system so I go on the back and there are three screws and we need to take out those some of them are non-magnetic as you can see and probably one of the other no not this one but the last one I think it was magnetic so it, it not really okay yeah but sometimes they um they are magnetic sometimes not and off with the with the mount so this is how it looks there's a ten I mean spring here in here where you can see it it pulls back the aperture assembly to um, 
is the connection pin here to the camera so it stops down the, the lens now looking to here uh, we set the lens to infinity so it's more easy to come into the um, back lens group and we can just take apart the the aperture ring there's no steel ball it's just a, a spring with a kind of a little um, I mean it's pressed out to be it I mean if they put in a, a steel ball and a small spring it would be more expensive I guess so it's all it's all plastic this one and now we face into the back lens group it sits with in a metal mount but it sits with the three screws here and again uh, set the mark so you will know the the back lens uh, group mount sits in the same position as before you took it apart so just make a scratch here and also on the on the plastic part in here this lens is a mix of plastic and aluminium part so we're <coughs> Yeah, it's because of the price, so it's make it more um, cheaper. Now, I can unscrew the three screws on the back here with a JIS 2mm, the other one was 2.5. So it's more easy to access the three screws and then pull it out. So, and just have a finger on it so it will not just drop down. So there. And then I can actually just take it out as it is. So that this is how it looks. There's actually a lot of oil, so I will probably make a video how to clean the aperture system which should be quite easy of course I have I could have fully taken it apart but uh, well I will just make another video so uh, what next the um, focusing ring itself so set the um, lens to to infinity and then take out the um, the three screws here there there and there but before doing so just uh, so we know where things sits <coughs> I make a small mark up here uh, this is the infinity uh, mark and in line here with the index mark uh, I also make a mark in here but it would actually be better and that's what I actually done set a mark in here in the end of this uh, half moon ring that holds to the uh, focusing ring so make a scratch in here in the end of it on the shiny aluminium uh, part which you can see here so it will be something like that here and make a scratch there I already done it but um, and it actually sit in line with the yellow mark here double field mark so uh, so we just have uh, where this ring should sit when we actually is um, assembled it again now take apart the uh, the three screws here on the focusing ring it's good they are also magnetic I mean made of steel and um, the ring 
is actually making the focusing ring makes the stop so the lens cannot I mean the focusing uh, helicoid cannot go any further than infinity so when taking it apart we just lift off the focusing ring when we have taken out the last screw and do not turn it at all so now out with the last screw so and just lift it out something like that and that's it now inside here um, I set a mark um, because it will make it easier to see uh, where things should sit when I unscrew the the inner helicoid and the the focusing ring itself from the outer helicoid so this is important you have to have the reference point so this is why I set infinity is here with the screw or really close to it you see the screw hole here and it's almost in line with the uh, index mark in so I use the the yellow um, double field mark to make a scratch all the way up to here and all the way up to the inner plastic uh, focusing focus barrel um, that's important that's my absolutely reference point so I can take off the the um, index ring I guess it's the name <clears throat> and uh, so I know the position of where things should sit since I haven't take off the the uh, helicoid key uh, I mean everything is is uh, correct at the moment so that's it and then we can just pull out this to the front so it will be I know it's difficult of because of the light <coughs> now so I haven't moved the shiny ring so this is why I can set a mark here in line with the uh, my reference mark on the focusing ring it will say the middle of the of these uh, helicoid now I also set a mark here at infinity just uh, in case of okay where is infinity actually so now I have three marks in line here uh, so <clears throat> without the focusing ring and it stops I know the position so now I can take off the heli helicoid key and then take out the first the inner helicoid which is made of plastic so just unscrew it and now it's a bit rusty so maybe there has been some water it's long time since if we have <laughs> it has been seen any grease or it's really dry you can see there's a rusty here now now I can actually hold a finger on the the outer ring and the inner I mean the middle ring and then I can turn the inner helicoid and it has to be turned because I made some notes on about this so <clears throat> before I take it apart 
I will measure how long from the very front here to the very back here. There should be 35.70 something, uh, zero, zero, 001 or something like that. And that's important. So we just set it here and just need to align the my clipper has to sit correct <coughs> oh. so it should be something like that uh, depending on where you measure the um, when you measure the uh, the the long the the length <laughs> the distance from here to there it varies a little hmm. so it depends here so we end up, ended up with something like that with the of course, I should have measured it. Um, I measure it before when I make my notes, but I should have measured it with the helicoid key in. <clears throat> of course, sorry for that. But this is how it looks in my lens. It could be different in your lens. So, to take apart the inner helicoid, we need to turn it a little more then half a turn and it will come off at around five o'clock so we try that we have my reference point here and I will turn it in this case seeing from the front counterclockwise as you can see here <clears throat> so my index mark going down all the way to where my off point will be so looking from the front five o'clock is something around here so I turn it and it will come off at my index mark it will come off at five so you see this is how it looks this was only half a turn and you can see the old grease which is something it looks like it is uh, molly coat or so not quite sure but it's a bit dried out I can see oh really dirty now take it away <coughs> now the outer helicoy uh, again I have my reference point here and I need to turn it oh we just measure it should be 29.38 or so and it's also the same as I wrote down here the outer helicoy in reference to the middle helicoid it will be a little more than eight turn till off at one o'clock so my reference point here and it will come off here I set a mark so when I turn it eight eight turns uh, it should come off and it's a fine thread so we will and it has to be turned uh, clockwise so I set one two three four five and 
six, seven, and eight, and a bit more. And it will say off at one. So when I hit that, it comes off. And the, <laughs> the grease here on those two, or actually, or one, two, three helicoids, and of course the plastic, is a really dry. So uh, I need to clean that. And uh, I will just put it in a in a bath of uh, of isopropyl alcohol and let's see how it will be after that I will of course not put the um, this part in uh, because of the the aperture blades so uh, I will just use the brush and simply uh, gently wipe it off but the other part the other two parts here will just pop in and stay there a little so uh, I will be back okay <clears throat> after some cleaning um, we continue so it looks uh, fine and nice on these uh, helicoids and also uh, in the plastic inner um, helicoy uh, with the uh, aperture assembly and I just use a makeup brush and uh, isopropyl alcohol and just uh, wipe it away uh, and f holding this in this position so the isopropyl alcohol will just uh, yeah fall off <clears throat> and then use a cloth I uh, an old t-shirt is actually really good <laughs> for just um, wipe away the rest of the of the grease the old grease which was really dry so now <clears throat> it's time to re-grease the uh, the helicoids with some and uh, just a little amount and again I use a fine makeup brush so um, and simply add a little uh, oh there was some small hair on it don't need that <clears throat> and a little amount and simply add it on the on the thread and I will just begin <clears throat> with the outer and just a very little and then screw the the next teleco in and move it a little to to spread the uh, the grease <clears throat> and it's a fine thread and it doesn't need that much um, so we will see how good it will go it can only be better than it was <clears throat> So, I think it will be enough. <clears throat> now find the off point, which was here, close to the infinity, or the uh, depth of field mark. And uh, my reference mark here, you probably can see there. And simply put it on, and find the thread. Move it a little, so click. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now give it some good movement so to in that way spread the grease. And there shouldn't be <coughs> a lot. Uh, uh, left in the thread so we can just put it I mean, unscrew it again and see how good it was I mean the grease is really um, is really good on the uh, threads 
so there is not me really much left out so uh, I can just assemble it again and find the thread it has to say click in a way <coughs> there and one two three four five six seven and eight and of course it was the one o'clock so I have to go all the way with my reference mark oh it's difficult to see with the shiny but my reference mark is there so I have to go all the way up to the my starting point at the depth of field the infinity is here and the depth of field where I started so it has to be there then it's correct and we can just measure how it actually is and it should be something like 29, 38 and uh, yeah and yeah we ended up almost the same place it uh, yeah it doesn't really matter <coughs> uh, because it could be if I move it slightly a little it could uh, change the the lengths here from here so now I can just add the um, the grease for the inner helicoid and it will not be much in here um, and then I will just make a video out of the uh, the <clears throat> aperture assembly. I think it will be helpful for some. And it just have to be an oil, I mean grease film on the uh, those threads. So it doesn't have to be much. So, and now we can simply put this in. <coughs> my off point is here. My, uh, where did it go? My reference point is up here at infinity and the depth of field. And if we go down to the bottom, my uh, off point for the, for the inner helicoid should be at around let's see five o'clock it will be around here and um, since I also set a mark here on the inner helicoid you see there I can simply just put it on here and find the thread it can be a little difficult because there are three points one there there and there so you have to wiggle a little um, but since you have your marks they should just come on here then give it some movement and uh, wow it looks it feels really good this uh, grease and there shouldn't be any left on the I mean it doesn't have to be much but we can see there is some grease on the uh, threads here and that's enough since it's plastic against aluminium <coughs> and it works pretty good so I now I just uh, put it in and there it is up to my reference point which will be there and uh, I should end up the same as my helicoid key will also 
tell me that I'm on the right track so I can just measure and it should be something like uh, depending on how this sits there and there it's not really much so you see I actually ended up the same uh, as I started with and my marks are in line as you can see here oh. <laughs> so everything is actually fine wow great and now it's time to assemble the whole thing again <coughs> just need to have some <coughs> grease on the uh, aperture ring when I come to that and I also need to add a little on the helicoid key that I will do now and it just have to be very little I can just use the tiny mount so that will be more than enough than enough <laughs> so just put it in and give it some movement so there and we can just put it in <clears throat> I mean one can use the uh, some thread lock uh, 222 from Loctite uh, which I will just add a little shake will be for use <laughs> and it doesn't have to be little uh, if we have piece of paper somewhere you can just use this so that's it <coughs> it doesn't have to be much since um, it will be fine for that so there and the next screw so there and tighten it good and we can just check if the um, helico seems to be really good wow feels really good really nice and and, and uh, I mean has a good movement it's not sticky anymore at all so I can add the uh, the of fill uh, index mark ring and it has to sit on from the front um, and I have my marks here the in, the infinity and my depth of field so I should end it up with the same which we just do so and the yellow mark here you see here this this mark here will in line with the with the uh, mark I set and the the um, yellow mark and then the holes are fine so you see it's in line here that's important <coughs> and then just use the smaller one screwdriver put it in tighten it gently because it's plastic so there is no need for tighten it too much So there and this last screw and here we are now I can just add the uh, focusing ring and um, put it in and since I also have my mark here I know exactly where the focusing ring should sit 
because you see here uh, probably I yeah here I set the mark here in the very beginning in the end of this ring and it should sit in line with the yellow mark here so uh, and since I mean if you take out the ring here uh, you should set like I did uh, where is it? tool here you should set a mark in here um, on the inside of the plastic and on the ring so you know the position of this uh, the focusing ring <clears throat> so now I, uh, I do not have it's not necessary for me to make any adjustment I just have to put it on and put in the screws and then they sit where they should and we can also give those screws a little And oh, I forgot one. So there, just forgot this up here. And we can just do it again. Eh. Of course, they should sit different in the screw head. <laughs> So there, tighten it gently so and here we are again and I have a wow it feels really good a nice and soft and buttery kind of <clears throat> so it's really good um, yeah, now I can add the uh, back lens group in here um, and I, since I also set the mark in here and I set a mark somewhere here on the back on the side of the the uh, back lens group I can just put it in it can only sit in one position because the holes are really tight so that's not a problem and I screw into plastic so it's not really necessary to have any uh, thread lock on this in my opinion it could be but I don't think it's necessary in this case they sit really tight in a way so on with that tighten it good not too much so and here we are then I can um, actually add the uh, the aperture ring and uh, it also needs some loop uh, on the click uh, here so maybe it's better to just put it directly on the on those notches doesn't have to be much so it is <coughs> and let's see how it, it is there the fork here has to go over the pin here that moves the aperture so put it on wow that's really good and you can see the aperture is moving I mean it doesn't move because um, 
if I move the inner, the uh, moving part of the aperture ring here, and then I move the inside, it will also move. And then I can move it full open with the ring. So <coughs> now I can just add the uh, mount with the three screws. And uh, yeah, you see the pin here goes into the notch down here. It will say this notch here. You see, <coughs> and uh, so there, and you probably have to move the uh, mount a little. So it fits into place and find the screw holes. There are only three there. And we could also give it some um, some thread lock, just a little. Oh, a bit too much. Because the screws are not magnetic, so <laughs> yeah, we can just put them in. There. And screw it in. But before doing so, we just need to move the aperture ring a little so the mount sits correct. And then I can just screw in so. And we will just use a little mount. Doesn't really have to be much. <coughs> I will disassemble the lens anyway uh, to make a video of the aperture assembly. So there and wow, feels really good and the focusing is really good. So now I just need to put in the uh, front lens. And uh, it's in, uh, I set this mark in the beginning, and it has to sit where the closest to the aperture assembly, it will say something like that. It will be so. So the whole farther away from the index mark it's for the uh, front lens the holes up here is for the uh, front ring so when I put the front ring on you see I have the mark here it will sh it will end up the same place as before I took it apart and the screws are the same for the for the front lens group and for the front ring. So uh, there's nothing to be worried about. And the last here. So those three screws here and the front ring. It will stay there. And in with that screw. Next one. Oh gosh. Sometimes it's good to have a bigger screwdriver, sometimes not. And the last screw, here we go. And the front, the name ring, going a little backward to click the thread, finding the thread, and 
if you just yeah here we have the good click and then use a <laughs> um, a walking stick uh, end rubber end which fits for this lens and then tighten it gently so now we are back on track with a focusing helicoid that works pretty good that's it for me for this see you sooner bye bye